We want to thank you for joining us at Cowboy Junction Church today. As you hear this message, we pray that your faith will grow and you will be both encouraged and challenged. We would really love it too if you would subscribe, rate, review, and share this online. You can also help us reach others by partnering with us financially. You can easily give a one-time gift or set up a recurring gift at cowboyjunctionchurch.com slash give. We hope you enjoy the message today. Hey, glad you're here. Today we're going to kick off a new series that we started last week for Church on the Go. And on Church on the Go weekend, we tell everybody, don't come to church. Go be the church somewhere. And that's what we hoped you did. We help you by equipping you with a message that wherever you're at, you can just instantly watch it. Maybe that was on Facebook. Maybe that was on on, um, our podcast. Uh, Maybe it was on our, our website. Maybe it was on our app. I love watching it on our app. We've got one of the coolest apps if you download it. And um, this is uh, one of our ways of just encouraging you that you can be a self-feeder. Holy Spirit can speak to you the same way he speaks to me. And and you can be easily where God wants you to be because he's not bashful. Okay, And that's what we did last week. So with the message, uh, we showed you something that I've been very excited about for the last several months. But I got to finally introduce it to you last week. And for some of you, this is your first time to see it. It's Andy Taylor's new book called Reading Your Bible for All It's Worth. Okay, Andy Taylor's a very good friend of mine, a very good friend at Cowboy Junction. He pastors in Sayre, Oklahoma. And he's, a, he's an old cowboy that just really relates to our church really cool. He's an old bull rider back in the Donny Gay era. And, and he just loves Jesus with all of his heart. He pastors a fantastic church there. And he wrote this book because he saw how many people he knows that just struggle understanding, reading, and and explaining some of the things that they read in the Bible. This book is basically a Bible college class of what's your Bible all about, narrowed down to in easy-to-read chapters. Okay? Now, if you're a book person, I've already sold you. Like, oh, I need to get that. Okay, But it's the people in the room that you would go, I don't like to read. If it, it, can I get the audio book version? It, it, but let me tell you what's great about this book, okay? Andy understood that as a guy, and this is just a guy thing, okay? Maybe ladies, you, you're like this, maybe you're not. I, I don't feel like I accomplish anything if I can't finish a chapter. And normally I can't finish a chapter, okay? And Andy condensed this down to... Short little chapters, no joke. I've got this thing really marked up. It's, it's just marked up all over. But these chapters are so small, and, and they're one or two or three pages long. I mean, that's a chapter. And it's really interesting. Let me, let me tell you the way that Andy and I have been explaining it. This will be the greatest book you ever read in your life. This will be the greatest book you ever read in your life. Okay, But if this book can help you enjoy reading this book, this could be the second greatest book you've ever read in your entire life. Seriously. And as a guy who who has just fallen in love with everything in here that's me, I have still fallen in love with this and have read some things in here that I forgot about or is explained better than it was explained to me the first or second time. And in the last several months, these two have complemented each other in such a wonderful way in that um, it's, it's, it's been wonderful for me. And that's why for the next several weeks, we're going to be in this series called Reading Your Bible for All It's Worth. Now, let me just tell you some behind-the-scenes kind of stuff about this. Of course, our, our incredible creative team goes to work on series. They've been working on this for months. And we have to come to some kind of decision on what is our logo going to look like? What are, what are we going to do when it comes to this series? And, and we stuck to the iceberg theme, okay? And you're going to see this iceberg over and over and over again when you come to Cowboy Junction, okay? And the reason why is because this is our symbolism about how much people get out of reading their Bible, okay? You, you probably have only reached the tip of the iceberg on what the Bible has to say about your life, what the Bible says about Jesus, what the Bible says about what God is and what God does, how his kingdom works. And this symbolism of an iceberg really identifies where we're trying to go 
in your scripture reading and understanding the heart of God in scripture. So today we're going to kick this off, and I can't wait. So would you join me in prayer? Father, we love you. We've prayed a lot today. I love praying. I think the next series may be on prayer. Jesus, today we're going to talk about your scripture, your word, your, your law, your poems, your prophecy, your revealing of prophecy, your, your upcoming things that are happening. And Father, it's all found in your Bible. And Jesus, today with all my heart, here's my prayer, that you would show us how important this book is, that it's more than anything we could ever imagine it being. It's living, it's breathing. It, it, it's applicable to where we're at today, even it was written thousands of years ago. Jesus, guide us, lead us. I pray for my friends in this room within the sound of my voice who really don't know where they stand with God, with you. And I pray that this may just deposit something in their heart that they would begin to take a step forward and to read in their Bible for all it's worth. And for those in this room who have just struggled and struggled with scripture reading. They like good preaching. They like someone to explain things to them. But the enemy has just convinced them that they're not, they just don't have what it takes. Or what, today's message, Lord, I pray that you would remove an old callus and we get right back down to the sensitivity that our heart can be to receive the things that only you can do. Jesus, we love you. We thank you and we trust you. So in your mighty name we pray. Amen. I have a question today. I'm going to kick this off with a great question. The question that I have is, why do people not read their Bible? I mean, seriously, if you just say it really quick, everybody knows why, okay? Everybody has their reasons why, but I want to just pause. Pause for a minute, and I just want us to think, why do people not read their Bible? Think of your personal reason. Why do you personally not read your Bible. Now, if you're in the room and you're like, but I do read my Bible, then we're skipping over you. We're glad that you read your Bible. But we're talking to the 90% of the people in this room, and that's kind of what the statistic we came down, came down to, is 90% of Christians trust their pastor. They love good teaching. They love to see something that really sharpens them. They love to be around other Christians. They're not the same person they used to be, but they struggle with reading their Bible. Now think about that. 90% of Christians struggle with reading their Bible. And if that that's the case. Why do people not read their Bible? Why do people struggle with reading their Bible? And, and we have a few reasons that we've talked about. And, and, and I guess the obvious one would be it's just not important to them. I mean, life's going good. Things are going great. Uh, we survive the hard times. We get through them. We, we love the victories and the, and the mountaintop experiences. But really, how is the Bible going to add to my life when Jesus has done so much already and I trust my pastor and I trust the people around me and I like to watch Joel Osteen on TV and he makes me feel really good? And uh, 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 what if? What if that's the only Bible you receive? The, the problem with it is this. It's the same reason why we don't uh, just live our life through other people. There's a point someone has to turn to you and say, stop. What do you want to do? Quit trying to be like your mom. And quit trying to be like your dad. Who are you? Who are you? And when people start identifying with who they are, all of a sudden they begin to realize that there's a whole big life out there that they didn't even realize was available to them. This is the story of why your, your scripture is so important to your Bible, the Bible you have. The reason why is because God wants to talk to you. You are important to him. Your, your husband's awesome. Your wife's awesome. Your kids are incredible. You've got great friends. You've got a great church. You've got a great pastor. But stop for a minute and realize God wants to talk to you. And if we live the rest of our life on a pre-chewed food mentality uh, spiritually to where the only way we're ever going to get something from God is if we allow somebody to chew something that was supposed to be for us yeah. and then spit it back out and hand it to us, that's kind of gross. It's kind of gross, but it's kind of the gross I want to get to to explain to you the importance of you realizing what it's like for God to serve you something that was meant for you, made for you, put together for you. It was a part of your spiritual digestive system, and you're going to grow from this. That's the importance of your Bible. So, so one of the obvious reasons is it's just not important, and it should be. It really should be. Some people don't understand the, the, the size and the magnitude of how Scripture can jump out and lead you 
right where you're at right now. And some people start looking at the donkeys and the, and the carts. You know, what are the donkeys and the carts? We're talking thousands of years ago how life was lived. And it is, is it even applicable in today's day and age? And the answer is the scriptures, the word of God is sharper than it to any two-edged sword. That's an old saying. It comes from the word. It says, it says that it separates bone and marrow. Now think about that. Your, your, your structure is made up of bone and marrow. And, and it's so intricately put together... It says that's the illustration of how the Bible can go right to where you're at. It can divide bone and marrow and go directly to the most specific area you're in right now. Beyond the donkeys, beyond the the, the carts, beyond the Roman soldiers, beyond the wars with spears and wars with swords, beyond all these things, these are just the icing to the meat of the cake that's inside that is the story of what God wants to speak into your life. Another reason why people don't read their Bible, let's just face it, it can be intimidating. I'll give you a quick example. You've heard me be honest with you about this many times. Have you ever sat down and said, I am going to read my Bible? I am going to read my Bible. I am going to be a Bible reader. And maybe you did something like this. Maybe you did. God, wherever you want me to start reading, that's where my thumb is going to stop. And then you start reading right there. And you know, that's worked sometimes for me. It actually has. It, it, does, it hasn't worked all the time, but it has worked sometime. But sometimes that's how people go about it. But then the funniest thing, and people are like, that's me. and it, I, This is me too. I'll start reading. And I'll read and I'll read and I'll read. And all of a sudden, I am all the way through an entire chapter. And I cannot tell you one thing I just read. And and that's a lot of people. And some of us, here's the intimidating part about it. As crazy as as that is for me to say it, and as crazy as it is for you to say it, do you not realize we've all experienced it? And you and I have thought there's something wrong with me. There must be something wrong with me. There must be something wrong with my spiritual life. God may not be real. God may not talk to me. What, how come God talks to other people but doesn't talk to me? And I'm just going to stop and I'm just going to tell you. I think there's some things that we do that makes it more difficult than it should be. And I think we should stop and pause and realize we need this series in our church very badly, very badly. And we need this series in our, our life. But I want to start off today and I, I want to just tell you the title of my message. My title of my message is, is called A New Look. A New Look. What if we begin to look at Scripture with a whole new look? This statement I want to make, I want to jump up here. The only way you will enjoy reading your Bible is if you want to enjoy reading your Bible. Now, think about this for a minute. It's in deep, it's in spectacular, but it is true. If you're going to enjoy reading your Bible, which that's the goal of today and the goal of this series, what if you begin to enjoy, what if, enjoy reading your Bible? What if it didn't feel like an obligation? What if it didn't feel like a, a check off the list thing that you did and then you checked it off the list because you know you read it but you can't remember anything you read and now it's not enjoyable it's not fun it's like chores you know you got to do it you've got to get it done but it feels like a job it's like a job of a christian you should pray and you should read and, and it's not fun anymore it's not fun but what if what if you begin to enjoy reading your bible well here's the kicker if you want to enjoy reading your bible uh, the only way you, you will enjoy reading your Bible is if you want to enjoy reading your Bible. And that's been the new thing for me lately. I've approached Scripture reading more of a side of this is actually going to be something that in the long run is going to be a really good thing in my life. What are the things that are distracting me from enjoying it? What are the things that are making it more difficult from enjoying it? And that's what we're going to talk about today. So, so I'm going to cover the what, the why, and the how. Okay, The what, the why, and the how of Scripture. And one of the greatest Scriptures found in what are you reading when you read Scripture. And this should be inspirational. Let me just tell you, when we put this up here and you start reading this, I'm going to read it. But then I'm going to explain it. And this should make some of you sit up and go, I could do that. That does sound enjoyable, okay? And it's found in Psalms. And that Psalms says this in chapter 19, verse 7. It says, the law of the Lord is perfect. Okay, let me time out for just one second. It says the law, and that can be very intimidating. It can be very scary. 
It's actually saying here the word revelation. The revelation of God is the law of God. The revelation of God is the prophecies of God. The revelation of God is the word of God. The revelation of God is the poetry of God, the wisdoms of God. The, the, all these things are wrapped up into what we refer to as the revelation of God, the aha moment of God. The, law, the aha moment of God, the, of the Lord, is perfect. The revelation of God is perfect. Everybody say that. It's perfect. And that's one of the first things you have to understand if you're going to start enjoying reading your, your, your Bible. What you're reading is absolutely flawless. And there's a lot of people who say, well, Ty, it's not. But it is. It really is. And if you take a portion of it and look at it and then compare it to some other things, it looks like it isn't, but it doesn't contradict itself. It is actually a complement of each other. And there are people that, that you're going to read about in here but you've got to keep reading and you've got to keep seeing and you've got to keep going back to the reality that the revelation of God, the law of God, it's perfect. It goes on, it says, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure. Enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean. Enduring forever, the rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired than they are, than, are, are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Now, I told you I was going to go back and I was going to cover some things. And the reason why is we need to. Because here's what just happened. We just read this whole thing and there's somebody in the audience right now goes, is going, dang it, I did it again. I can't remember one thing he just said. Okay, just chill. Just relax. We just covered an entire little paragraph here. And I just want to go back and do something that you ought to do. There is a pause moment. And you have to understand the power of the pause when you read Scripture. You just read this whole thing, and believe it or not, even though your brain didn't get it, your spirit did get it, okay? There is a multiple things taking place in you right now, and your brain may not remember this, but your spirit, man, just took a great big old breath of fresh air, okay? And that's a win. And a lot of you need to go back and realize that is a win, and you need to realize you did something very good just now. It's one of the reasons you keep coming back to Cowboy Junction. Because we do this very often. We read things. And your brain may forget it, but, but it did something to your spirit. And now let's do something for your brain. Since we just did something for your brain, or your, your spirit, let's do something for your brain right now. Let's go back and look at it. First of all, at the beginning it says, it revives the soul. Reviving the soul. What does the revelation of God do? What does the law of God do? It's not only perfect, but it revives your soul. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time your soul was just revived? Every time you study the word. But when was the last time for some of us, we felt like we were young again? Our soul was lifted. We felt the weights come off. We felt the joy of the Lord being our strength. We felt the peace that passed all understanding. And the problem is sometimes we carry so much weight, so much responsibility, so many things to do, so many things to think about. Adulthood has kicked in that we forget that one of the reasons we, we, we love Scripture so much, it revives your soul. It doesn't remind you about where you're at. It reminds you about who God is. And it revives your soul. Another thing that, that takes place there, it makes the wise thing, it makes wise the simple. Uh, now, now think about that for a minute. Your brain read that a minute ago, and some of you caught it and thought, that's really good. But you've got to stop and pause and really think about this. What does Scripture do? It makes wise the simple. And sometimes that's why we don't see the value in Scripture. Sometimes we think the complicated gets it's praise or complicated this is, this is going to be hard that's why it's worth it and you're going to realize oh, but god god's bigger than that god can take something so simple in your life and cause it to be one of the greatest decisions you ever make in your life but just a simple thing just a simple little tweak he, this isn't complicated this is as easy as your spirit deciding that this is going to be something you want to do 
I see how God does it. I see how it is. And God just made something simple be a very wise thing in my life. This is the story of Scripture. It goes on. It says, the precepts of the Lord are right. And then it says this. It says, rejoicing the heart. This is different. Um, a minute ago it says it revived the soul. But here it specifically said that it, it, it rejoices. What does it say? It, it rejoices the heart. Come on, let this set in. There's far too many heartbreak. There's far too many disappointment. There's far too many wounds. There's, when was the last time you took and examined your heart to see if there were calluses? Has your heart got a callus on it? And what Scripture does is it reveals and it, revi it rejoices the heart. It causes the heart to feel, gosh, sensitivity again. Just to be able to feel the tenderness of your heart. This is why scripture is so important. It goes on and it says, it, it, it says, if you jump down, the rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. But one of my favorite parts is it starts talking about the value of scripture, more precious than gold, even fine gold. But then one of the things it says here, and this is really an illustration, it says it's sweeter than honey. And one of the things that, it, that I've, I've preached on here before is when young rabbis, when, when, they, when, when they go to rabbi school, that's the, that's, let's just use that as the terminology today. When young rabbis go to rabbi school and they have their first day of class, class and their decision is for the rest of our life, these are young boys, they're going to make scripture their life, okay? You think on day one it would just start this memorization process. But on day one, the very first thing that takes place, and the way it was explained to me, is these young boys are lined up on their first day of rabbi school, and the old rabbi walks in and has a bowl of honey. It still has the honeycomb inside of it. And he walks up to each young boy, and he asks them to open their mouth. And they open their mouth, and they stick out their tongue, and he drips honey in their mouth. And he turns to him and he says these words, May the words of God, may the words of God be like the sweetness of this honey to your tongue. Oh, come on, think about that. The first thing these young men are taught, that this is what Scripture should be to your spirit, the same way this honey is to your tongue. When was the last time that happened? When was the last time that you looked forward to Scripture as much as you looked forward to a bowl of Cheerios? Think about the bowl of Cheerios. You know, you, you get up in the morning, the reason you get up is you can't wait to get a bowl of Cheerios, a bowl of Fruit Loops, a, a life. Life's my favorite one, right? I love life. Man, I love the cereal life. I love life too, but, but, <laughs> but can you see? And, and now you have the brain, brain trigger, but when was the last time you experienced that moment of realizing, but that's the, the sweetness of the word of God to my life today. May the bread of life. Lord, give me this day my daily bread. Bread. And it's, not, it's talking about a, a physical bread, but it's also talking about the bread of life for today. May, may. Sweeter also than honey and dripping of the honeycomb. Um, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14, it starts talking to us about the, the why. We just covered the what. But now why? Why scripture? Please don't get bored today. Please don't get bored. I want to be done just like that. But what can happen is your, your body can be saying roses, roses, roses right now. And I'm just going to tell you, roses will come. But do you realize that what I'm telling you today may change your life forever? It may change your marriage forever. It may change how you raise kids forever. It may change the future direction and the future spouse you receive. Who knows what's today is, 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 is in the balance of you understanding the importance of of falling in love with Scripture all over again. So we covered the what, but what about the why? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. This is the biggest why that I, I have in my life. Why do we have Scripture? And it says this, But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from you, you have... You, from whom you have learned them. So the author of 2 Timothy is encouraging the young man, remember who taught you these things. But then he's, he talks about the things that he was taught. And that from childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Let me just stop, pause real quick. We're going to get to the next part, which is very important. But the reason why I want to include this because one of the things you need to know about reading your Bible is all of your Bible always points to Jesus. 
This whole thing, from start to finish, you may say, well, Ty, that's the Old Testament. Look, look all throughout Old Testament, and it's pointing to Jesus. Look throughout creation, and it says, and they were created in the image of God. Uh, male and female, we created them. This whole we and are, this whole, what, I, I thought God was singular. And all of a sudden, the verbiage is, is, is plural. All the way from Genesis, it's talking about this Trinity God, and all arrows are pointing towards Jesus. Look at the story of the, the Hebrew young boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And you had these three Hebrew children who were thrown in the fire, stood up for their principles in God. Even if it cost them their life, they would rather die for God. They were thrown in the fire. Remember the whole story? And then the king looked over, and he looked down, and he said, I thought we threw three people in. Remember this part of the story? I thought we threw three people in. And most people want to make a big deal about they got out of the fire. No, 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 make a big deal about what's happening in the fire. And then he goes, I thought, I thought, thought we threw three in, but I don't see three. I see four. And one of them looks like the Son of God. It's the Old Testament story all throughout, everywhere you look. And that's why we bring this up. It's showing us here. Holy Scriptures, which you are able to make to wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Everywhere you look, it's pointing to Jesus. But the very next thing it says this, this, and this is the why. All Scripture is given by inspiration for, of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. This whole, verse 16, is the encouragement to God's people that everywhere you look, you're going to find God leading you, guiding you, correcting you, encouraging you, lifting you up, turning you around to find the best that He has for you. Does that make sense? And the next thing it says is that the man of God, is there anybody in the room that that represents? That's me. Women of God. This, this includes you. Anybody in the room this represents? Look at what it says for everybody who values Scripture. That the man of God, that the woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Here's a surprise. And you may be shocked by this. I'm not. You, every person in this room, every person within the sound of my voice, has a specific calling that God has put on your life. Every person in this room is called to be a problem solver. Every person in this room is called to be a problem solver. God made you for a reason. There is somebody in this world who needs you. There is somebody in this room that is counting on the God gift to rise up inside of you, and it requires equipping for the good work. And that's what Scripture does in His people. Does this make sense? We covered the what, and that's the why. You will tap into who you are and what God's plan is for your life when you start diving into what Scripture can be. So I told you there's a what, there's a why, here's the how. Before I get to the how, I have a question. A real, a real important question. Answer this in your heart, answer this in your head. Can someone read their Bible and not get anything out of it? What do you think the answer is? Don't answer, okay? Can someone read their Bible and get nothing out of it? And the answer is, Yes, someone can read their Bible and not get anything out of it. However, this is what we do know about Scripture. It, it never returns void, okay? So it's a little trick question, okay? Just because, just because you don't get anything out of it doesn't limit the power of the Word. And let me give you a great example, okay? The question is, can someone read their Bible and not get anything out of it? They can, but it's not the Bible's fault, Look at it like a seed. Okay? Yeah. Can you take a seed and plant it and it not grow? You know you can. Your garden is proof of it. Yeah. Yeah. You can plant a seed and nothing happens. Yeah. But it wasn't the seed's fault. Yeah. And, and I, have, I have scripture to back this up. You guys, you want to hear the scripture to back this up? You ready? Because everybody in this room... There is God's word falling on your life all the time. Let me give you another shocker. Y'all ready for this? A lot of people come to me and they say, God doesn't talk to me. 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 And let me just call a time out. God is talking to every person in this room. Right now, in this very moment, 
in your very day, right now. God has been speaking to you all day. God has been speaking to you all week. God is speaking to you right now. But even Jesus turns and says, there are four conditions of the heart that tell us whether someone is actually going to hear what the Father is telling them. And all of a sudden people are going, oh, wait, I know this story. And you do. If you've gone to church long enough, you know this story. And if you haven't, you need to know this story. And this is, this is the story of how. How does Scripture get into our hearts? How do we lose what God is saying? And we're going to wrap this up, okay? Here's how. Jesus starts off by this, and he says this. Matthew 13, 19. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, are we tracking here? When anyone hears the word of the kingdom of God and does not understand it, is that anybody in the room, I've read the Bible and I don't get it, okay? I've heard it and I don't get it. I'm just kind of coasting now because there must be somebody wrong with me. Hang on. When they don't understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received the seed by the wayside. Now, there's a bigger story here, and we're condensing it because we're going to get you guys to roses, okay? But just go with me. Just go with me. The bigger story here is Jesus begins to talk about what happens when the sower goes out and sows seed, and how come some seed just doesn't grow. He says one reason is because the, sometimes the sower throws it on the road, throws it on the hard, compacted road, and the birds come along and scoop it up, and it never even has a chance to set roots. That's the same way it is in our own hearts. Why? Because there are far too many of us, and let me just talk to every person in the room, whose heart is just way too hard. It comes out in so many ways. But honestly, for anybody in the room that you just feel jaded and you feel, you, you feel sarcastic and everything, everything, everything is just doubted and everybody, you think of the worst before you think of the better. You, you think, you, you, you don't hear what comes out of a person's life. You've already judged them by the way you look, by the way they look. There's a hardness. I mean, let me tell you, you, you know who can be affected the most? And police officers can be affected the most. You know why? Because of all that you've seen. I'm telling you right now, I don't mean to call you out. I'm just want to, can you all see how after you've seen so many things in this world, it just makes your heart harder and harder and harder and harder and harder. Firemen can experience too. Teachers, teachers can experience it. You get into teaching because you love kids. Then you get out of a teaching because you just love, well, love retirement more than kids. Yeah, and, and, and that, I'm just trying to draw us all in. Can you see how life can just make you hard? Yeah. And no wonder every time you sit down to hear God's word for your life, it's quickly scooped up, taken away, and you don't even remember anything. And, and it's not the seed. Guys, listen, you got to listen to me. It's not the seed. It's not the seed. It's your heart. But are we not serving the God that's in the heart business? Yes. Are we not serving a good, good father that has grace and love and all we have to do is go back and just simply say, Father, I'm tired of living like this. And he will break the ground up and he does it in love and he removes the calluses and he heals the brokenhearted and you will find a sensitivity that you were once afraid of, but now there's a comfort in. Right. And he guards your heart. Once he digs your heart up and it's soft, it's amazing how that he guards your heart. He protects it. You know why he protects your heart? Because this is where the seed falls. Yeah. Here, here's the second thing. There's another type of heart, okay? Another type of soil. It says this. But he who received the, the seed on the, uh, <clears throat> he received the seed on the stony places. So here's the third one. Stony ground. You know what that is. You live in Lee County, okay? It says, this is he who hears the word and he immediately receives it with joy. Woohoo! And he, uh, yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. And when tribulation or, or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. What does this mean? There is a condition of the heart to where you're just sensitive enough, but you're way too shallow. 
You're way too shallow in the way, the way you think. You're way too shallow in what you do. You haven't made a decision that's been your decision in a long time. You just go with the crowd. You just do your thing. And the thing is, you're a really, really, really good person. And we can really, really see that seed, God's seed, springs up in you. But there's a point in life to where you're way too shallow to ever receive the harvest that a seed is meant to bring in your life. But don't beat yourself up. Just stop. Just realize we've all been there. We've all been there. So what do you do? There, there's a cap. And there has to be this moment. that, And this is really important. I want you to get this. Maybe you want to write this down. Let Holy Spirit to just coach on you this. We've got to go deep. You, you, you have got to start taking your thoughts captive and not letting people live your thoughts for you. You've got to allow people... To, to not be the barometer of your life or, pe or, or things or stuff or situations, the cares of this world. To, you've got to start going deep. Going deep and allowing Holy Spirit to coach on you. And when that happens, when your heart finally gets past the temporary satisfaction things of life and really goes into the kingdom eternal things in life, you will see the word of God start coming alive in you more and more and more and how do i know this there are people in this room right now and one in particular who i love with all of my heart who would tell you he was the most shallow man ever until god finally got a hold of his heart and when god finally got a hold of his heart it's amazing how the word of god began to come alive inside of him. and he lives by faith he talks by faith he is he's a man of faith but he was once shallow and god healed him of it and it's possible and that is when the word of God begins to come alive. There's a third one. Y'all interested in the third one? Okay, this is so good. I love this. I got plenty of preaching time. No altar call tonight, so we're just going to go on with it. Y'all ready? Go, this is so good. It goes, now, he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word of God. And this is the third one. When your heart just has so many things going on, it's like growing a garden and you've not chopped one weed. Have you guys ever had weed gardens? And you swore you planted tomatoes. You know? And, and that, that tomato plant is just fighting for nourishment. That tomato plant is just fighting, fighting for space. But you've got monkey grass growing up, and you've got, uh, uh, oh, what's the, uh, cuckleburrs or, or uh, goat heads? Oh, my gosh, goat heads. And it's just sapping the soil. It's the same story with your heart. Let me tell you what happens. If you're going to grow a good garden, this is the story of your heart, what's the, one of the first things you do? You start pulling weeds. You, go, you, you mark off a territory, and you say, this is mine. And you start pulling weeds, and you start pulling weeds, and you pull all the weeds, and you dig them up, and you get this space cleared, and then you plant that seed. And there is no competition for this space, because you've removed everything. And far too many of us say too many yeses, and there is no more room for God to speak in your life. One of the most dangerous things about you reading scripture is you do it while you're frustrated. Let me tell you what frustration reading your Bible looks like. You're going to start getting up early. So you get up early, but you got up late. Okay? And now you're getting up, and you're there, and you're like, I just don't, I'm a, I, I just got to read this now. And now you're reading, you're speed reading the Bible. Okay? How do I know this? Because you're looking at the best speed reader of the Bible in the history of speed reading of the Bible. Okay? And you're speed reading the Bible now, and you're speed reading all because there are other things that are just, just knocking on the door of your heart. And this is literally what's going on in your mind right now is while you're reading, there are three things knocking on your brain. Try reading your Bible while this is going on in your head. You got to get to work. You got to get up. You got to get in the shower. Kids are about to get up. You got to get them off to school. You got and, and, and try, and this is the story of what thorny ground looks like in the condition of your heart. How are you ever going to enjoy reading your Bible? if you feel nothing but pressure for your time while you're reading your Bible. Come on, who am I speaking to today? This is so true. How do you enjoy things? When you enjoy a cup of coffee, do you not just make time for it? You just move everything out of it. And you're going to enjoy it when you make room for it. The fourth one, and this is the most healthy one. This is the healthy one. It says, but he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it. Who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirtyfold return. Yeah. 
This is so important for us to understand. We're going to wrap this up, and there's a few caps I want to go back to. One of the things that we have to do in order for us to, to get to this point, okay, we've got to learn to renew our mind. Take our thoughts captive. For, for a lot of you, I want to just give you a, a real quick breath of fresh air. Some of you may not be morning Bible reading people. Hallelujah. Oh my gosh, thank you, Ty. Yeah, yeah, listen to me. You may be late night reading Bible reading person. Can you do that? Yes, you can do that. See the condemnation? See the guilt? I thought you were supposed to give God your best. Yeah, but your best is not 6 o'clock in the morning. You are not you at 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, just breathe, just breathe. How can we make this enjoyable again? And so we renew our mind. We renew our mind. And how do we renew our mind? Romans tells us this. We got it? And do not be conformed to this world. Quit doing it the way the world does it. Quit being like the world, but be transformed. Did you hear that word? That's the word of the day. To be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Okay, and at the beginning of today's message, I started off with a statement. And I'm going to go back to that statement because I think it's going to mean a lot to us right now. So let's renew this. You ready? Here's the statement we made at the very beginning. The statement was, the only way you will enjoy reading your Bible is if you want to enjoy reading your Bible. Come on, that's the message of today. Right now, as we're in this room, there's two things God's doing. He's speaking to you. God, right now, is speaking to you. So the question is, where do you start? Where do we start reading our Bible? And right now, as we speak, God is speaking to you right now. And some of the things he's talking to you about are very urgent. Very urgent. Another thing is, sometimes it's very specific. Specific. Specific? Specific. Told you. It's specific. Let me show you what this. Right now as you speak, Brady, I'm going to need your help. I tell you what, I, I pick on you too much. Clay, I get to pick on you today. Okay? Come help me. You ready? I just want you to go, go live your life, and I'm going to show everybody the illustration of the specific or the urgent that, that God's doing right now in your life. Where do you start? Where do we start reading our Bibles? And so I want you to take off. Clay's li li living his life. He goes to work. <laughs> He's going, he goes to work at Cowboy Junction Church, and Clay's just living his life so well, and he's doing such a great job. Why don't you live your life that way, Clay, and go, go back that way, okay? And right now, this is what's happening. As he's talking, Holy Spirit is just talking to him and saying, Clay, you scored with a wife, but the next chapter of your marriage has a lot to do with you searching me about her heart. And he's going to turn around, and no one's going to be there like, I thought we had a great marriage. Have you guys, have you ever been walking down the road, and God talks to you about your marriage, and you thought you had a great marriage? But God's not telling you you have a bad marriage. God could just be specifically talking to you about something urgent. And he's getting you ready for it. He's preparing you for it. And so this isn't a time to panic, but it's something specific and urgent that right now, Clay needs to realize that this is so strategic and where he needs to turn in his word to study the things. And it's as gentle, and you can sit down now, it's as gentle as a quick and, and wonderful push. It's not rude. It's not mean. It's just a push. And right now, as we speak, there is something that God is pushing urgently and specifically in your life. And that's where you start reading. It could be something as simple as healing. If God talked to you about right now about healing, would you not stop and go, whoa, 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 but I'm not sick. This must not be God. I'm not sick. Stop. This may not even be about you. This could be just something that God wants you to study on. This is important. It's urgent. It's specific. It could be healing. It could be finances. It could be God's plan. It could be about God's love. It could be about God's grace. It could just be the history of God. But it's urgent and it's specific. Sometimes this works, ah. but sometimes God says, study humility, Micah chapter 6 verse 8, and you go to Micah chapter 6 verse 8, and it speaks to you 
about where God is and what he is. And and just to make sure that we keep the main thing, the main thing. But you are being led by Holy Spirit right now as we speak. Don't doubt that one bit. Open your scripture. Dive into where he is. And sometimes it's as easy as I want you to start in the book of John. And I want you to read all the book of John. And I want you to go back and read the book of John again. I want you to go back and read the book of John again. One time God took me through the book of Malachi for the whole year. And it only had four chapters. And, and I, I meditated and I chewed. But you are being encouraged right now. <clears throat> Most people don't pay attention to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And that's why they just don't know where to read. I want to just ask you something. As we wrap this up, is there anybody in the room that you would say, Ty, I'm ready for a scripture to come alive in my life. Well, I want to pray for you. But this is a big deal. If you're not, I just want you to stay seated. If you are, and this is going to be something that you pursue, and if you don't have a Bible, we want to give you a Bible today, okay? You're going to get a Bible if you don't have a Bible. If you have a hard-to-read Bible, we want to give you an easy-to-read Bible because an easy-to-read Bible is way easier to read than a hard-to-read Bible. <laughs> Seriously, I'm serious, okay? The yogiisms. I love the yogiisms. If you're in this room and you would say, heck yes, I'm ready for the Bible to come alive in my life. Would you just stand up right in your seat right now? Just stand up right where you're at. Here we go. And Father, I just pray for my friends. And I pray for every person that has decided in their life, this is going to be an important thing. This is going to be something that I don't trust Ty on. I don't trust other pastors on. I don't, I don't trust my parents on, though I respect them. Father, I want to trust you on this. I want you to reveal yourself to me through Scripture. I want to enjoy reading my Bible. So Jesus, my prayer for these guys is that you would speak. Remove the stony ground. Pull up the weeds that choke out the life. And soften the hard heart. So that we can be the fertile soil that you have created us to be. We need you. We love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. As you leave today, if you don't have a Bible, go to the hub and just simply say, I need a Bible. They'll give you a Bible. But Andy's books are back there. And uh, we've got, what you see is what we've got. They really got scooped up. We'll get more if we need them. But they're in the back. You may want to buy this for somebody. Maybe you know somebody that just struggles reading their Bible. This is a great little book. Mark in it, highlight it, underline it, whatever you want to do. This is just such a cool little book. Cowboy Junction, next week, don't come here on Monday. Go to the event center on Sunday. Lisa Bevere will be our guest speaker. It's time for us to love God, love people, and have no limit in our life. I love you. Jesus loves you. Don't you ever forget it. God bless you guys. Have a great week in the Lord. See you later.